So hello everybody, I'm Carmen Capito. I'm a consultant in general pediatric surgery at uh, Hôpital Necker, um, a former lad in Paris, uh, dedicated to hepatobiliary surgery and solid organ transplantation, pancreatic surgery and management of short bowel syndrome. My research is on pancreas. So uh, before starting, um, I would like just to um, let you know a few points uh, specific of our activity. Uh, so split liver transplantation uh, represented more than 90% of pediatric transplantation in France. Um, this is due to the favorable donor allocation system that we do have because all the donors below 30 years will be uh, allocated to pediatric recipient and this represents 3.8% of all liver donors in France. Um, twice uh, the figures of the US, but far less behind uh, Italy, um, uh, who has changed his donor allocation system in 2015 and increased by this way uh, the number of splitted um, uh, livers. So as you know, um, the, the split procedure has permitted to reduce the mortality on the waiting list. Uh, going from 40% in the, the 80s to less than 5% now. It's a specific technique with very specific complications as compared to wall liver transplantation. So um, we uh, will go uh, through uh, this content and, uh, and uh, discuss about all the steps of um, uh, split liver transplantation. We'll not discuss uh, about indication or pre preparation of the uh, recipient, uh, although those steps are extremely important. Um, uh, but we will start at the donor selection and go through all those steps. Um, so there are multiple parameters uh, with varying weights um, of importance uh, balancing in the decision process of uh, performing a split liver transplantation or not. The most uh, critical uh, fa factor is the choice of the couple donor recipient and um, this is um, uh, all this is crucial in uh, this procedure because also marginal organs can be used as wall organs, uh, wall grafts. They are at high risk uh, when uh, used as a donor for split liver allografts. The transplant team uh, um, must always balance between the overall quality of the donor organ versus the health status of the recipient child. And you have always to deal with the Cornelian dilemma, which is the more the child needs a, an urgent transplantation, the less he or she can suffer a poor quality donor organ, but the less he or she can wait for the ideal donor. And during this complex process, uh, that takes place, uh, at least in France, uh, most of the time uh, in the middle of the night, uh, you have to be deeply perspicacious uh, while reading the donor chart and always think about the whale and other people and how much risk you can take in regard of a specific recipient. This is a French expression. The most dreaded complication is indeed primary non-function. It implies the absence of liver activity following transplantation. If it is complete, it will require immediate retransplantation. In this setting, different mechanisms are involved at the different steps of the transplantation process. Pre-preservation injuries are uh, mainly due to underlying liver conditions such as uh, alcohol or drug abuse, obesity, long-term medical history, or um, uh, injuries due to uh, the preservation of the donor, uh, hypertension, anemia, hypoxemia during resuscitation of the donor. Those factors can lead to fatty infiltration of the liver, and it is well known uh, that donor liver macrovesicular steatosis is a factor contributing to severe uh, dysfunction or non-function. 
The other uh, important point, of course, is prolonged ischemia, cold ischemia time. This emphasizes uh, the importance of the timing and logistic organization around split liver transplantation and the good selection of organ donor that can suffer this insult. The cutoff generally admitted in uh, splitting teams is 12 hours for cold ischemia. Stahl and colleagues as, uh, have uh, well de demonstrated uh, on a meta-analysis a few years ago that it is quite accurate. You can see that it's an exponential uh, um, curve after something around 12 hours. Sibuleski and colleagues uh, uh, more recently uh, did the same. And when you just look at the beginning of the curve, uh, even though they failed to demonstrate any statical, uh, statistical differences, it's quite um, visible. Um, as a team, we put uh, the cutoff a little bit lower uh, with a limit of total ischemia of 12 hours, including warm ischemia. For the donor selection, um, uh, the, this uh, is undertaken by evaluating clinical information. Uh, criteria that identifies a donor liver uh, as one with the potential to be split were, um, were established by UNOS in the US. Ours in France basically uh, follow the same lines but with some differences. Uh, for example, the age uh, is uh, below 50 and not 40 as for by you know. Uh, we limit donor age at 50 because of the liver's regeneration capacity, which are proven to be compromised by aging. But this upper limit is, of course, balanced uh, by the injury. Sometimes we will have, uh, we will take older donors because the child can't wait. The uh, perfect donor is uh, a young, so young, hemodynamically stable with a short resuscitation uh, required, not abusing of drugs or alcohol, and with no complex medical history. Reda regarding a static uh, biochemical uh, test, the ideal donor has no severe electrolyte disturbances and deteriorating trends. Also, uh, the Switzerland uh, team uh, of Barbara Vildaber demonstrated no difference in primary non-function occurrence in pediatric liver trans transplantation with donor sodium above 160. We keep this limit uh, for acceptance. For the other figures, uh, we have a quite high cutoff of 800 uh, for ALT, and, uh, but in regard, of course, with the cause of death. It is sure that a post-trauma donor is more prone to have elevated liver enzymes. And in the contrary, we will be more suspicious if it is a neurological accident that causes the death. Remember also that if all is necrosed, you do not have any enzymes produced, so no elevation, no movement. We are also uh, very suspicious, suspicious of donors uh, during weekend evenings uh, by car crash um, because of the risk of um, acute hepatitis or primary non-function induced by severe alcohol abuse. For the remaining criteria, the donor should be stable because high level of hemodynamic support can induce ischemic lesion to the liver. And uh, uh, the last step of this choice will be to check the CT uh, in order to confirm that this liver is splittable. When evaluating uh, for the donor's choice, uh, it is important uh, to evaluate the ratio weight of the donor um, uh, to the recipient. The, the aim is to obtain a functional hepatic mass of 1 to 3 percent of the recipient weight. In order to calculate that, we do use a simplified uh, formula, which is donor weight uh, between 4 and 10 times the uh, recipient weight. We will um, harvest a left, left lateral segment. 
If the donor weight is two to four of the recipient whale, it will be a left lobectomy. If the graft to recipient weight ratio is below 0 0.8, the recipient is at risk of small Forsyth uh, syndrome, uh, which will be characterized by excessive portal flow, major ascites, necrosis of the liver parenchyma. On the other side, a ratio too high will lead to large Forsyth syndrome with a main potential dramatic complication, uh, which is um, acute uh, graft venous outflow obstruction. And then when once the donor has been accepted for a recipient, it is now time to retrieve the liver. This uh, uh, step of the procedure is uh, very important also. One important point is macroscopic evaluation of the liver by the surgeon. If there is a suspicion of fatty infiltration, steatosis, biopsy at the time of organ harvest can be helpful in those questionable cases. And if a macrovesicular steatosis uh, above 30% um, uh, is um, seen, the liver should not be submitted, in our opinion, to split. For small donors, um, don't forget uh, to uh, perform a minimal mobilization to avoid endothelial injuries, not, uh, notably on the artery of those small donors. And uh, during this uh, uh, moment, uh, at the end of uh, the retrieval of the liver, you shouldn't forget to uh, harvest also uh, iliac vessels for complex reconstruction. When comes the time of harvesting, we as a team cannot always afford to send a senior surgeon um, uh, during the, the retrieval. Consequences of this team shortage is that we do less than 10% of in situ split uh, per year, and all of them are performed by um, adult surgeons, uh, local adult surgeons when available. Rather than opposite techniques, I think we should see them as complementary way. Some donors can afford uh, a, uh, an in-situ splitting, whereas others know because it increased operative time. Advantages are, of course, the perfect hemostasis of the cut surfaces and the reduce of total graft ischemia. Ex situ implies a shorter operative time for procurement, and the harvest can be uh, done by residents, uh, saving senior time. A study conducted by uh, FANA in our team a few years ago um, uh, more than suggests that ex situ transaction was an independent factor of increased risk of bleeding. So these advantages of ex situ is mainly uh, the risk of bleeding and emphasizes the importance of the preparation of the cut surface during split procedure. The increased ischemia time is not really a problem as long as you light up this liver before 12 hours. Then once on the back table, you need to assess the feasibility of the split. The split. The two most important points for us is the portal anatomy and, of course, the cholangiogram. So uh, before that, you need to prepare, to prepare the whole liver graft with two important points. No dissection of the biliary tree and portal vein freed from the, the posterior side, which is easier when you turn uh, just the liver and just uh, free the portal vein from the posterior side. And then you will uh, finish by the vena cava, closing the diaphragmatic veins and so on. So portal anatomy is important to recognize. And basically for us in just one situation, it is when the, um, the hepatic division, the division of the portal vein is intrahepatic. In these cases, we won't share the liver 
and the, uh, the, the whole liver will go to the more urgent uh, recipient. So either a liver reduction for the child or whole liver for the adult recipi recipient. The second point important is the, uh, the biliary anatomy. You need to know that more than 50, no, around 50% of biliary trees are not modal. And so hepatic biliary anatomy uh, should be assessed prior to uh, uh, the split uh, because some anatomic variation will preclude the, uh, the, the procedure. We use, so for that, a calendrogram uh, on the back table, table before transaction and before giving the OK to the, the adult team. So uh, I... I I won't go through all the, the variation that you can see uh, on the portal, uh, on the biliary anatomy, but those are very important uh, to know. This is an example uh, of a, a, a cholangiogram on the back table. You can see that the first clip which is the we use clip just to uh, repair the place where we will cut the parenchyma. With a clip here, we would have um, sacrificed, jeopardized uh, the biliary, uh, biliary duct of the segment four. Here also, and then the best place would be here. And then we, we cut here. Another example, here it is a little bit too um, uh, distal and uh, the cut should be more proximal here. For the segment one, of course, uh, the things are, are quite different. It is almost sacrificed, almost always sacrificed by the adult things. So for the splitting vessels, if we have time, we will go through um, one piece of, uh, uh, I think, a nice movie that we have on the team uh, and which can be useful uh, for um, students uh, in assessing the technique. I will move uh, when I think it's not very important in order not to take too long. So this uh, was a left lobectomy uh, uh, for a big child. And so the preparation is always the same. You just start by the vena cava because it's easier and uh, you can relax during this time before going to the problems the healer. So, I'm going to move a little bit because it's not very interesting. This is the cannulation of uh, the, the portal system. And then the dissection of the portal vein from mesentery and pancreas. We do an arm block um, retrieval uh, with uh, because it's easier for you, the youngest to, to to bring back the liver and the pancreas, and uh, it's an easier uh, technique uh, requiring less dis dissection during retrieval. So we ask them to bring back the liver and the pancreas, if the pancreas, of course, is not harvested by another team. And then there's always a step on the back table uh, with um, removal of the pancreas and freed of all the vessels. The portal vein is now completely free. And then we will just check if it is splittable the first uh, by seeing if the bifurcation, portal bifurcation is extrahepatic or intrahepatic. Here it's nicely extrahepatic, so you can go and control it. And as you can see in the front, nothing is dissected really. D 
the Ontario electrification will be exposed and then keeping everything around the, the common bile duct, all the tissue around the common bile duct uh, with this bile duct in order to avoid ischemic injuries for the adult team. And then you identify it with a little cannula. The left hepatic bile duct. And the clip is put in order to repair the, 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 the place where we will start the parent tube. Then you can see that as we, it's a left lobectomy, the clip is perfectly positioned because we will keep all that, all that deck for the segment four. And then comes the time of splitting vessels and bite ducts. So for this section, I will go a little bit further. Just to see that at that point, the left portal branch, which is the one we will keep for the child, is cut. And just to show you that the section of bile ducts will be performed just with a scalpel with no dissection and just cutting at the level of the clip that we've put. Once that is done, it's quite easier after to perform the parenchymotomy. And uh, the only important point will be to follow will be uh, the middle hepatic vein, which is be, should be kept with uh, our uh, left lobe. And, uh, and just to determine the plane of the parenchyma too. We keep going with the section of the healer plate. And then we'll start the parenchymotomy. We use ligature during the first two, one or two centimeters of parenchymotomy because uh, vessels are small uh, at the surface and uh, we do have uh, good results in terms of by leakage or, uh, or hemostasis. And 
more deeply, uh, it will be a classical uh, Kelly classic uh, as per uh, type. So. So then now you can turn back to live in anatomical position and then kept. On the right of the middle hepatic vein. This, yeah, the second one is to identify the right hepatic vein. And then the line is defined and just goes forward and same. So uh, next steps after that, uh, of course, is uh, the transplantation step. And in the same spirit as before, I will describe the step uh, the steps of graft implantation and its particularities. First of all, you need to know that uh, it's blocked. Uh, you need to know that the hepatectomy is not all the uh, is not at all the easiest part of the procedure. Back to FANA studies, um, study, it's clear that the long-term results of graft survival is correlated to the amount of blood loss during transplantation. So this technique should be precise, bloodless, and uh, if impossible, you have to remove the liver quickly without forgetting to dissect the pedicle as high as possible to get enough lens in case of, uh, although it's less fetal in living uh, uh, in um, uh, deceased donor because you, you always have uh, exceeding uh, vessels. We do the preservation of the vena cava as described by the Brisbane team in 1988. And then, uh, no more surprise, the liver has been removed uh, and everything has been decided before warm ischemia times, time. And uh, you can... Uh, ...a careful technique with the triangulation technique described by Emo uh, in 1993, using um, the orifice of all the three uh, uh, hepatic veins merged into one single orifice and widened by a vertical incision of the anterior aspect of the vena cava below the original origin. The same is performed uh, uh, on the left hepatic vein of the graft, uh, which is uh, widened uh, by a, a posterior incision. Uh, this will allow adequate matching of the two orifices. Um, anastomosis uh, is performed by a triangular anastomosis of four or PDS for, for our team. During all this step of uh, um, uh, uh, vena cava anastomosis, we infuse the liver with cold albumin in order to reduce the warm ischemia time, this infusion is performed during, um, via uh, the, the portal cannula. And uh, <coughs> we are um, quite happy with that because you can sometimes have, uh, have some difficulties to perform this anastomosis and you know that you, you do not, at least you reduce the uh, warm ischemia. Uh, by this infusion. When the anastomosis is completed, uh, we check the cut surface for complementary um, um, hemostasis thanks to the albumin flow. 
Once that is done, we clamp the portal vein uh, with the graft filled with albumin. This will avoid the child and anesthetist blues at declamping by vascular still uh, in an empty organ. The portal vein anastomosis is then done end to end most of the time should the portal vein not be hypo hypoplastic. However, sometimes this uh, vein is uh, hypoplastic and uh, in 25% of patients, according to De Manier um, of uh, Brussels team. And you need to know all the techniques available uh, uh, in order to uh, to perform a plastic of uh, this portal vein. You have basically two approaches um, in order to perform this end to end anastomosis. You can interpose a venous graft uh, that will elong elongate the recipient portal vein and allow the anastomosis. Or you can do a portoplasty by suturing a vein patch uh, after opening the recipient uh, portal vein in an inverted Y uh, fashion, uh, which is so you do the incision in the anterior face of the portal vein and then one uh, part on the mesenteric vein and the other part on the splenic vein. Uh, this, uh, the most difficult point in the technique is to dissect the porta, uh, sometimes far behind the pancreas, in order to complete, uh, completely free the origin, uh, the, the origin of the portal trunk at the confluence of the superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein. Uh, De Manier from uh, Brussels team, uh, I'm sorry, but it's not opening, I don't know why. Um, uh, nicely demonstrated uh, in their team, in their hands, that uh, there was an increased risk associated with interposition of a vein graft as compared to the portoplasty. So uh, they do perform um, uh, portoplasty most of the time and uh, extremely rarely uh, the, the interposition. Uh, our approach is a little bit similar, but we don't do a, um, an augmentation of the vein with a, a vein patch. We do the section as the portoplasty has been described and then perform an end to side anastomosis uh, directly on this um, uh, portoplasty. Um, this anastomosis is only possible if you use the parachute technique to sue because uh, it's um, a little bit hard to perform it when the liver is already uh, just on uh, the, the recipient portal vein. Um, another technique, I'm sorry, it's not going up also, but I, I can give you later on all those. Uh, another technique has recently uh, been released by Feng in 2018 uh, with the use, in fact, of uh, it's exactly the same of um, the, the augmentation with the vein patch, but they use the uh, portal bifurcation uh, as a patch. Uh, and so the dissection uh, during hepatectomy is extended uh, in the, the portal branch inside the liver so that they can have a nice patch. We did that once uh, with uh, poor results, but I think conceptually it's uh, something very interesting. Uh, and you can avoid to have to harvest a jugular vein if you need to do your protoplasty. Uh, before completing the, the portal anastomosis, we are used to retrieve 10 ml per, per kg of blood um, uh, in children with minimal or absent uh, uh, portal hypertension, compensated by the same amount of red cell and FPC transfusion. The idea behind that uh, is to reduce re reperfusion injuries due to accumulation of metabolites produced by the one or two hours of uh, portal is uh, mesenteric ischemia. 
just need to check the color of your boil. If the portal hypertension is important, the boil will not change the color uh, during uh, portal clamping. And if the, this color change, you need, we uh, think that you need to remove a little bit of this blood in order to avoid those injuries. So um, once the portal vein is performed, we do the arterial anastomosis quite quickly if uh, the reperfusion of the liver is not uh, perfect uh, after the portal uh, declamping, uh, portal and uh, hepatic vein declamping. The, the artery will be done by an end-to-end -end anastomosis with 8 uh, o uh, proline. We do prefer non-absorbable non stitches for this step, as you may have inflammatory processes during resorption of the stitches, with inflammatory real structures occurring thereafter. If the recipient artery is too small, we will uh, do an iliac conduct during the cold ischemia time while waiting for the split to be completed. Uh, quite classical to um, with an iliac conduct uh, harvested from the donor. We do the anastomosis below the um, renal arteries and um, above the, the inferior uh, mesenteric artery. And then the anastomosis to the, the new liver will be quite easy. After those steps and after decamping all the major vessels, it's of course the time to give back the child to the anesthetist because sometimes they just need to rewarm him and uh, to uh, give all the infusions uh, necessary to uh, find um, um, uh, um, a state of um, balance. Uh, for the Biliary anastomosis is nothing very special, and uh, it's an hepaticogetinostomy with interrupted suture of 7 PDS, a Rouen wide between 45 for small uh, children and 60 for uh, uh, children above one. Uh, the, the graph will be attached to the fastiform ligament at the end in order to avoid the acute bed carry um, uh, after transplantation. And uh, the closure should be performed with tension-free um, and uh, controlled by post immediate postoperative ultrasound. We do have a rule, which is that if everything went wrong at each step, horrible hepatectomy, horrible difficulties to uh, do the anastomosis, we don't close the child. Uh, we do a um, secondary closure a few days later when the edemas will uh, go on uh, in order to uh, not to jeopardize all the those uh, sutures that you've done and all those small vessels that you've left inside. To finish, <coughs> uh, I wanted to, 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 to give you also uh, one of the specific point of our postoperative uh, management. Our protocol of thrombosis prophylaxis includes antithrombine substitution starting in operative room. We are conducting at uh, the moment a study on the hemostatic balance after transplantation by assessing the thrombin generation. So far, what we've seen is that there is a real shift in favor of a pro-thrombotic factor during the first five days, despite the low PT scene. Uh, and this correction will occur after five days if the liver uh, works well. So we do uh, put antithrombin substitution uh, until the, uh, the liver is able to produce uh, more than 70% uh, of antithrombin uh, between two substitutions. We add uh, low molecular uh, weight heparin and of course scan, uh, ultrasound scan uh, twice a day during five, uh, during the first week. And uh, the switch to aspirin is done uh, generally at day 10 if the liver produces enough uh, antithrombin um, um, by itself. 
So as a summary, um, what I can say is that for donor selection, most important point is to choose a pair with, that will be suitable um, uh, for the split procedure. During uh, retrieval, uh, it's extremely important not to um, uh, uh, to it's it's important to perform a biopsy if you see that uh, the liver is questionable. For small donors, you need to do a gentle fraction on vessels in order to avoid dissection. For assessment of the feasibility of the split on back table, the portal bifurcation and the cholangiogram are of utmost importance for us. For splitting vessels, uh, you always have to keep in mind that the, the cut surface hemostasis can jeopardize, uh, bad hemostasis can jeopardize the results of your transplantation. So you have to do it very carefully. And during transplantation, questions before warm ischemia time is, do I need a venoplasty? A conduct or an augmentation with a patch and if so uh, uh, do I need um, a graft for that and uh, and so on. Do I need an iliac conduct because the artery is too small? I have to perform my iliac conduit to anastomosis my iliac conduit before one ischemia and then once the, the organ is implanted and the transplantation finished always do attention free closure and don't um, uh, don't um, think that going back to OR one week later to close the child is a, a, an important issue. Uh, there's no, in our experience, no more uh, um, infectious complications or such other complications uh, when we do this attitude, um, uh, and it can be really. Uh, bankable, uh, if I can say. And for post-operative course, I, we do think that antithrombin substitution is of uh, major importance, and we hope that we will be able to prove it uh, in the next years. Thank you for your attention. Um, I've had a question, Dr. Acapito, congratulations for your presentation. Um, I've got a couple of questions. Do, do you hear me well? Yes, yes, I hear you. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. It's Esteban Froca from here, from Madrid. I work in the pathology unit and liver transplantation. My first question is that, um, do you think, um, um, do, do, do you have seen a positive impact after this um, anthethrombin um, uh, treatment in the first post-operative days? In, um, release, in relation of decreasing your or um, at, um, hepatic artery thrombosis rate, or what do you think about? Uh, so basically, we, we, we are now writing um, the, the paper. What we've seen since we use antithrombin is that our um, um, hepatic artery thrombosis rates is around 1 to 2 percent, which is the figures that you can see on living donor liver transplantation. And as you may know, the figures of deceased donor liver transplantation in pediatric teams is more around 8 to 12 percent. And right. the techniques is the same. We don't think that we are better surgeons than the others. We just think that this balance of uh, pro and anti-thrombotic factors can help during these first steps in those cases where the flow, the, the children are small, the hemodynamic changes are important, and sometimes you, they just move um, in a hemodynamic states quite quickly and you can have thrombosis at, the, at those moments. And with antithrombin, I think we, we change something because the figures are there to prove it. And for um, uh, portal vein thrombosis, it's, it's uh, more or less the same. I think we are something around 3%. Uh, 
uh, as compared to eight to t or ten um, in other teams and in our team also before uh, antitrombin. Okay, thank you very much. And the second question is: in in every split procedure, do you perform any kind of um, um, a study of the biliary tract in terms of cholangiogram or cholangiography in every patient in every procedure? Yes. Do you perform it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Always. It's it's always after the cholangiogram that we say the okay to the adult team. I know that the adults in another um, they don't when the, the the adult because sometimes the split is performed by the adult for us when we are not uh, enough in the team at the moment of the transplantation. And I know, I know that some teams in adult surgery don't perform it, uh, I mean, as a standard. But um, I think when, uh, when I've learned split, for me, it has been a, a part of a reassurance part of mm -hmm. the procedure, because I think this moment of cutting the, the healer plate is quite difficult when you learn split. And when you have your clips, your cholangiogram, you know that you can't be wrong and you will cut at the good place. And um, maybe later on with experience, I will do differently, but I, I don't think so because Christophe Chardot, who is my boss and my mentor, is always performing a cholangiogram <laughs> and is not young at all. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have also a, a question in the chat. If you want, I can read it as well for you. Uh, are you <clears throat> are you performing splitting during normothermic machine? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <clears throat> no, we don't yet. But we will start uh, 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 this year, I think, with the Lyon team, uh, who has decided, the adult uh, hepatobiliary team of Lyon has decided to, uh, to start a protocol of uh, splitting on normothermic machine. And uh, we are quite uh, excited to start that. Uh, we don't really know how it will work, uh, but um, I, I'm sure that um, it's, a, it's a, a valuable approach and uh, it's worth at least studying if we can give, uh, if we can improve our results in terms of quality of the liver um, with this kind of approach. I think it's Yadira Bravo. I hope uh, I answered your question. So anyone has any other question? If not, uh, thank you again, Dr. Capito.